So what I wanted to share is um, the way in which I, Victor Jernigan, rate neighborhoods. This is the way that I do it. I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not saying that you should do it. But I do challenge you to go out and find a system that is better. So we're going to start with a three mile circle around a piece of property. And I tell people all the time, I've got a computer program that's really nice and I'm paying $80 a month for the program and me all kinds of data that I can use and does all kinds of math and stuff. And I find it, when I need it, to be very helpful. All of this information is free. And what did I say about free? It trumps everything. See the double play right here? Anybody get that? Free. Uh -huh. I worked on that. <laughs> so, um, you can get um, a little compass um, at the Walgreens or CVS, like in the school supply section for your kids, you know? And you can buy at the front of the CVS or the Walgreens, you can buy a paper map, and you can buy a piece of poster board at CVS or Walgreens, or you can go to Office Depot and save 30 40%. Flex Office Depot. So you take the map, you lay it down, to measure out where three miles would be, do a mile, three miles, two miles, three miles. Easy to do. And what happens is you develop a market area around the specific piece of property that you're interested in. Now, you, can, you should be able to do, if you're computer literate, like Ryan is computer literate, you could do this in probably 30 minutes on any piece of property. If you're a less computer literate, like I am, it probably takes 45 minutes. If you're doing it with the, the um, compass and the uh, red pen on, on the map, it might take an hour and a half. It'd be a good project for kids to get involved in that. But if you're interested in investing in real estate, I do strongly suggest this is going to be time extremely well spent. Because when you do this, you then have an identifiable area that you can use this ranking system on. Now, let me have one volunteer. Somebody please read what number one on the list is. And these are in the order that I use them. And I put this list together. I've been doing this for decades. And I put the list together because I have seen so many people on these websites desperately trying to figure out how to get a deal done to change their life, or they're going to buy a turnkey investment in some market where they don't live, or they're wanting to invest in a rental property in which they're going to take out a $200,000 mortgage. So these are the criteria that I use to mitigate risk. Because can you, can you eliminate risk? No. So, no, somebody read number one? Anybody? How big does the grocery store have to be? Greater than 40,000 square feet. And that eliminates the all these other world and the Trader Joe's in the world, which by the way are brothers. They are brothers. Brother, one brother owns Trader Joe's, the other one owns all of them. But what you're looking for is a full service grocery store that has fresh fruit and vegetables. And it's number one on the list because who are the buyers of houses? People who eat. So one, of the, one, of the thing, one of the things that most women look for when they shop, not to be sexist, but to be observational, is they are time constrained as it is with a lot of duties that women still do that we men should be doing more of. So shopping is a, a key item. And what happens is if you have no grocery store within three miles of the property, it's on the border of what's being called a food desert. Right? So we'll get into how this works. But there are two numbers on your page, the one inside the box and the one outside the box. And these are two properties that I'm involved in personally, and I just put them together on this ranking system. And um, the, so when you're looking at the criteria, um, you'll see that this is weighted in a D. You get two points, three points, four points for stores inside of a um, one mile of the property. And the you wind up with a you wind up with the weighted average 
uh, five points for each additional store. And the reason for that is, if there are no grocery stores within a mile of your house, you get about a 10% price increase in the value of your house by demand of people. This is statistics you can look for on the internet. Uh, you know, the, the internet's always right, of course. But there have been several grocery companies which have used this statistic in zoning battles around the United States where they're trying to get their grocery store permitted. And the people that are in the room who have been coming to the meetings for over two years heard me talk about in January of 2014 the Kroger that was coming to Powell, where it was the large 40-acre field that people drove by every day. And I talked about in January of 14 how that grocery store was going to be coming. And in June, I gave everybody a sight plan of what it looked like and a, what the neighborhood that would be directly impacted because they had no, and it was easy to do because they had no grocery store within two miles of their house. So by just simply looking at where there was no grocery store, you physically on the map, and you, and you can do it on Google Earth, it's got a mapping tool. Uh, the KGIS system, if you're in Knoxville, has a mapping tool. Bing has a mapping tool. All of this stuff's free. All you have to do is pay attention to a few issues. And so I told people that when that Super Kroger opened up, all property values were going to change. And so sure enough, one of the very first things that people talk to you about now when you go to Powell is this wonderful shopping center where the Super Kroger is and they're going to have eight restaurants in front of it. If you've been an investor paying attention and you wanted to own long-term rental property that was going to increase in value in Knoxville, you would have gone to Powell in June of 14. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to be a good real estate investor, but you have to pay attention. And rank it in neighborhood A, oh God, A, B, C, D, come on. Give it a point. These are my points. This is what I use. I'm not saying you should use it. This is what I do.